Coming up in this week's episode, we step on land for the first time in 38 days. My legs are all jelly-like and I feel a bit dizzy because I've been on dry land. We taste the local delicacies. <coughs> and is this the real French Polynesia? Merci. <laughs> hey, do you want anything for it? Money? No. Oh, thank you very much. Tell you what, I feel dizzy. A bit sick, yeah? Yep. My legs are all jelly-like and I feel a bit dizzy. Because I've been on dry land. Welcome, Welcome to Hilo, Hilo French, French Polynesia. Polynesia. French Polynesia comprises of more than 100 islands in the South Pacific, stretching for more than 2,000 kilometers with a population of over 270,000 people. Among its 121 islands and atolls, 75 are inhabited. The islands were first settled by migrating Polynesians as early as 500 BC. They were later discovered by European explorers during the 16th century and eventually colonised by France. The acapella is very remote, being right in the centre of the Pacific Ocean. There's a sign here. Attention pigeons. It does say pigeons. <laughs> it does, pigeons though. It says pythons. I can smell garlic bread. I'm the expert. Oh, it smells delicious. It does smell delicious. It's coming from there. Yeah, it is. From there. It's in one of these. Unfortunately, at this point, the weather took a turn for the worse, with heavy rain and strong winds. We quickly went to the local village, signed in, got some groceries, and headed straight back to the boat. I was still in this anchorage, just had a really bad squall. Uh, there was a large Helberg Rassi on the wall here, anchored and tied onto the quay. He's motored his way out, all the way out there, and now he's turned round and come back in. Yeah, it's He's getting hammered trying to get out. I've seen, I've just been on the old Sea Dog channel and he, out and across the Atlantic Pacific, he come to the same bay and it's still, it's so still and there's not a whipple of wave in here. Uh, since we've been here, it's been quite horrendous and uh, we were hoping to go to the shop and then leave, but this Harbour Rassi has attempted to get out and he can't even get out because the waves are so damn big and it's just been, uh, you know, I don't want to complain, but this has been an absolutely horrendous, horrendous anchorage with the waves. All the mud over there. It's just not been good at all. So we can't wait to get out and get to a nice anchorage somewhere where it's a bit more protected. After a heavy day of rain, can you see the water? It's so brown. Really, really brown. It's like a Bristol Channel. Uh, we tried going to the shop because we were going to sail today and go to a different place. But the shops weren't open because we found out a bank holiday Monday. No, a <laughs> bank holiday Monday. Holiday. It's Thursday, it's a bank holiday. It's raining again. Okay, so what I was saying is tomorrow morning we're going to try and go to the shop again and get some supplies and then we're going to sail out on the open ocean.
nearly ready to go. Got the tender on board. Uh, just getting the anchor up now. Raining again. Weighed anchor and we're out of here. Oh, I tell you what, we're just disgusting now. This has been the worst anchorage I can ever remember. I truly, if any of you are coming here, whether we've been unlucky, I don't know, but this anchorage is absolutely horrendous. It's open to the south, the swells and the rain. It's meant to be dry season. <laughs> it's been raining for two days. Anyway, enough moaning. Let's get to the other island over there in a sheltered bay, meant to be beautiful blue water, sandy beach and manta rays. <sighs> Hopefully it'll be steady over there. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's only eight miles away. down between these two islands and there's a lot of current going to the west. Oh, Don't I get that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of current. We're doing five knots. Yeah, not that much wind neither. No. It's flowing through the gap between the two, between Hiva O and this other one which we couldn't pronounce. Take a break. Take a Need to go all the way down there underneath the Genoa the end of the point and then around to the south. Got some rain moving in. See the cloud eating its way over the mountains. It's gonna bring wind a bit as well. Yeah. Yeah, look at that, amazing! Sun's coming out. It's sunny and warm and calm and it's beautiful. It's nice. It's really nice. It's it's such it's a change. As soon as we get round this corner, it's gone really flat. The wind has eased. It stopped raining. The sun's come out. I can actually start drying myself. Wonderful. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Wow! Oh my god, they're still big! That's what we saw. Look at this, look at this guy. Oh, they're massive! Huh. Oh look, my that's god. That's their mouth. Yeah. Huge. Wow. They are so big! Incredible! They have a good depth, 30 meters. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Gigantic. They are massive, right? really, really big. Oh, God, they're big. Would you swim with them? No. <laughs> Too big. It's just scary. They're all over here. When we were sailing across the Pacific Ocean to French Polynesia, this is what we dreamed of. Beaches with palm trees, an anchorage that's absolutely beautifully still, flat, gorgeous, clean water. Boats in an anchorage and a beautiful sunset.
What's this then? We bought three of these this morning. What's it? Fred stick. Yeah. We only got one left and a tiny piece. <laughs> we know all day. We're getting into the culture of the French Polynesian, isn't it? You can see. We're eating French stick. It's so delicious, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. Loads for lunch and loads for tea. Mm. Time to clean Atlas. <laughs> She's okay. filthy. How difficult is the top side to clean? Brushes and scourers, I think. Look. Done a bit. Uh, it's very hard work. Uh, looks okay up until that bit. It stinks. It's it does stink. It. Yeah. Looks a lot better than it was. I think we're gonna have to probably get the worst of it off today while we're just drifting off with no paddles. <laughs> get the worst of it off today, and then another day polish the hull. I think, isn't it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> With the top sides done, now it's time to have a look at the hull and give it a good old um, scraping. We were quite surprised by how little growth there was on the hull below the waterline. Our last anchorage was next to a river which may have had some effect on killing off all the goose barnacles. They're feeding the fish. Oh, yeah, they. Yeah. Can you get them off? Bash the hell out of them. You need gloves, really. Yeah, I can't get them off. After our brief stop in the other beach to clean Atlas and now she's all sparkling. We're at this anchorage, just two miles down from the other one, a lovely little village. But, but, there's a hellish wind blowing down this valley, straight out to sea, up to 38 knots. We had an incident this morning, Adam will explain. Last night is blowing a gale in this anchorage. The dinghy was in the water, the outboard was on there, and what happened? The wind got underneath the out the uh, dinghy, flipped the dinghy up with the outboard on there this morning. I heard it when I was in bed, like a big crash. Went outside, yeah. So we managed to get the dinghy upright again, take the outboard off. It was completely flooded. We took the spark plugs out, tipped it upside down, and all water came out the cylinder. We had to take it all apart, take everything off the outboard, clean everything, all the carburetor was full of water, change the oil, change the fuel, the petrol, and somehow we managed to revive it and get it going and it's running absolutely fine now. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, we're getting gusts of 37, 38 knots coming straight off the mountains right through this anchorage. We had two boats turn up this morning and they've already left, we had enough of the gusting. Anyway, today we are going to go on land and show you this amazing little uh, hamlet, little village that's here. And it's a nice road that goes all the way up to the top of a mountain that's over a thousand feet high just next to here to show you some brilliant views of where we are. It seems to run better now than it ever did. Maybe it was a good thing it went upside down in the sea. We'd like to thank Brad Simpson from Simpson Outboards in Penzance UK for guiding us through the process of fixing our outboard. Oh, 
Anh chưa? Đây This is a mango tree. Should I try and get some? Yeah. Massive. They're not very ripe or green. Dream. It's currently dry season here, but in wet season, during the winter, you can imagine the amount of water that comes down from their mountains. Oh, this looks look beautiful. Wow. I hope we can go in there and have a look. Just look around it. I have no idea where it is, so I don't want to offend anybody by touching it. So they'd be like, don't touch it! I know, isn't it? <laughs> Some sort of like traditional Maori? Is that the right word? I'm not sure. Stone tiki statues. Half man, half god. Symbolizes a mythological character who created human beings. <laughs> 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 Look at this beautiful building. And it's made out of stones, pebbles from the beach. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. It's lovely. Wow. This is impressive. Look at the roof, it's like yeah. wood. Yesterday, it was Sunday yesterday, oh, and yeah, we didn't bring bell. in the bell for churches. Yeah. Oh, it's open. Oh, amazing. It's amazing. Wow. That stunning, absolutely stunning. Beautiful, what a beautiful yeah. building. Yeah, what are these? Mm. They look like limes or lemons. They look like limes, don't they? Yeah. Oh, they're lemons, smell them, they're lemons. Give them a good sniff. Huh? Smell it? No. <laughs> Oranges. Tiny ones. Tiny little oranges. They're tiny though. Are they? Oh yeah. Oh they smell delicious. They're like, um, tangerines. tangerines. Nectarines that you get in Tesco's. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Let's steal them, right? Oh, they're tiny. I wonder if we're allowed to have some of these. We too late now, aren't we? <laughs> How amazing is that? That's <coughs> it, <laughs> Do you want to try one? <laughs> <laughs> too sharp, I think. Really sharp. I don't think they're edible. Taking some for the boat, but I don't think I will now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Looks big, Smith? No. No. Tiny. Uh, uh, tiny, tiny bit. What? Uh, what fruit? 
Beautiful. Amazing, amazing little town. Deal, come with that. It is, yeah. GoPro. Ah, little GoPro. Yeah. I like your, your Land Rover. Yeah. Mm. Nice. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Solid. Brit Sorry. British. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. Alright. Yeah, yeah, see you. Have a nice day. Mango trees, absolutely abundant here. More so here in the French Foreign Asia, I've noticed, than anywhere we've been. It smells amazing. It's gonna spray in my face, isn't it? You're gonna eat it? I'll have a nibble. Get that off the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The chickens got plenty to eat, all the mangoes. There's a lot of chickens down here, all in the streets everywhere. Made it. Man, that was tough. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's a picture postcard. I don't know if you can see Atlas. Just where my finger is. Amazing. We got French sticks then. Oof. Oh, hello. Delicious these are. Oh. From Atuona. Beautiful. <laughs> nice and tasty. <laughs> Is it for the shop? I don't know. Let's see. What? Are they for the shop up there? Are, are they for the shop? Do you want that? Yeah. One? One? Yeah, oh. Merci. <laughs> hey, do you want anything for it? Money? No. Oh, thank no, you very much. Me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've got a French stick. Oh. Yeah. yeah, we're going to go back. It's no good. Would like to give a massive shout out to our amazing patrons for your amazing support. You keep this journey alive. <laughs>